Hello and welcome to this video on how to strip. Not stripping, you disgusting people. <laughs> I mean stripping a border terrier. Or any dog that requires hand stripping. So firstly, let's look at the tools. This. This is a chalk block. These are very cheap and you will find them in basically any horse shop, horse people. You might find them in big pet shops, or you can buy them online, they're really cheap. This one was like two pounds. The chalk block I use to put into the coat. See what I'm doing is just applying the chalk block to everywhere I'm gonna strip first. This just makes it easier to pull the coat out. So basically, chalk just saves you a buttload of effort. Remember people, chalk is your friend. I use the metal brush just to get the undercoat out. I use the terrier pad or a slicker brush to make it neater at the end. Because the teeth are so close together it just removes all the matted undercoat. Now the terrier pad and the slick brush can be used interchangeably and they're just used to get all the dead coat out and give a nice finish. Now the technique that I use is thumb and finger, so you grab the fur and between your thumb and finger and you just pull it down like that. What I do is I come up underneath, so I've got it close to the root, and just pull it down gently, I don't yank. There's no particular area you have to start stripping out, but I always find it easier to start here, at the shoulders, and work down, and then, and just on the body, and then I come to the legs, the tail, and the head afterwards, because this is the more sensitive part I found. So you apply the chalk. And then what you do is you hold the scruff up so the skin's tight and you just use your thumb and finger and the fur should come out easily. Now if it's coming out easily in the clumps you can do it like that but if this is more painful you can just do it in shorter and quicker movements getting less fur out. Now the back and the base of the neck should be the easiest place to strip. So I'm just going to do this bit. You can already see the undercoat coming through. There is a 100% chance your fingers are going to feel it. That's why these little buddies are invented. These are like little rubber things that go on your fingers and stop you from getting blisters. I don't wear these because I'm hardcore. Ding. So now you can see Archie's body is all fully stripped here and he still has fluffy legs and his tummy's still fluffy and his head's still fluffy and that's because these areas are a bit more sensitive so you have to be more gentle and slower. And you have to be more aware that it can be more sensitive around here. It, is, it can be used to strip like this. And it just makes it easier. You just hold it between, you hold the tool between your thumb, so you're like this. And it just makes it easier for the coat to come out. However, sometimes if it's not used correctly or if it's too sharp, it can actually cut the coat, which is not what you want because it can make the coat curly. Always remember to groom it, uh, to strip them in the direction that the fur is growing. So you always strip it downwards still on its legs. Because otherwise it can be more painful because you're pulling the roots in the wrong direction. Okay, for the tail it's basically the same as the rest of the body. You just have to support it more. Some dogs have sensitive tails, so remember to be close to the root and hold onto the skin so it's not pulling them too much. You might want to use the tool for this. Um, 
I prefer just doing it by hand. So underneath the first can be longer. So you just pull it away gently. Same method, thumb and finger. And you can see where it's longer. If you go like this, you can see there's some straggly bits here. Good boy, Archie. There we go. It's a nice tail. Let's talk about the tools. This is a stripping knife and this is a stripping knife. This is a smaller one. This is for the face or the legs or the feet. Um, so I'm not going to say whether I like them or I dislike them. I use them for some dogs who are hard to strip. I don't use them for other dogs. It just depends on how easy the dog is to strip. Um, these ones are quite blunt, which is good. You can blunt them with a stone or you can just buy the blunt ones anyway. These ones are quite good. Um, the thing is, with the stripping knives, you have to use them in the direction the fur is going. If you pull it backwards at all, then the blade will cut the fur and that will cause it to become curly and you don't want that. Yeah, so just little bits at a time. Even though they do get quite fluffy bums, you'll be surprised how little fur is actually there. You can see I'm holding his head, and it's not because like he's mean or because I'm being mean. It's just because it keeps his head more steady and it keeps his neck more steady, so he's less likely to pull away. It just makes this quicker and more easy. Now I know some groomers who use thinning scissors on the chest here, but Archie is quite strippable. That he's fine with this. It's all coming out nicely. So I'd rather just strip as much as I can, really, instead of bringing out the scissors, because once the fur's been cut, it's really hard to strip it again, and it's more painful for the dog as well. We don't want that, do we? Yes, I did just use the adjective strippable. First, we're going to get rid of this top knot here. So that's the same as the rest of the body. It shouldn't be too sensitive on the top of his head. So... You just pull this bit out quite easily. I'm going to go right down to his cheeks. Now here, these bits are quite hard to get to, so what I tend to do is use my nail of my middle finger with the thumb and just pull it like this making sure not to pinch the skin but just this just makes it shorter around here now with the beard it's about knowing what is comfortable for the dog because if this is really causing him a lot of pain I would rather just get the scissors out and cut this bit just because they get a lot of food caught in it and it, if when it gets too long it's not very hygienic for the dog. Some people prefer having the eyebrows off and some people prefer having them on and it's down to everyone's personal choice. Um, on the left here he has had his eyebrows stripped on the right he's still got his eyebrows but I'm going to show you how to get rid of these eyebrows if that's the look that you prefer. Boy, actually. So using the thumb and middle finger, that's how I do it, just pull it out gently and you go right up from this eyeliner all the way up to the eye. Ears. So with the ears, you just use the same technique. Usually it's quite long, the ears, it's kind of like the um, tail. So you just keep pulling along and it'll come out. Make sure you go in the direction that the hair is growing. If you pull it upwards it won't be so 
comfortable, also it might cause bold patches, and you don't really want that on the ears. I also like to cut just around the claws. This is how I prefer it. And for anyone who wants to see what Archie looks like at the end, here's a quick video. Hey Arch, do you like your new look? Hello, it's Jodie, aka Crazel Pup. Um, Bramble? Say hi, Bramble. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to all our current subscribers and everyone who's watched our videos. It's great. If anyone has any dog training queries or if they want me to do a tutorial for any trick that we know, just ask down in the comments. And remember to give us a like. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for watching.